Welcome back to the game collection. If all goes according to plan, this will be the final video in Trails Month. It's been an absolutely wild ride to celebrate the Trails series all month, and hopefully I can pull off this review in time. How did I do? Anyway, last time I talked about Trails of Cold Steel, Kondo's biggest gamble yet, and it completely blew me away. But it wrapped up in such an incredible cliffhanger that I just couldn't wait to dive into Cold Steel 2. How did it do? Well, let's find out. Trails of Cold Steel 2 is phenomenal, and I get the distinct feeling that it's underappreciated in the larger picture of the Trails series. Sometimes thought of simply the connecting bridge between Trails of Cold Steel 1 and Trails of Cold Steel 3. Cold Steel 1 is a darling favorite because everything was just so new at the time. Cold Steel 3 would eventually change things up again, bringing the series to a new platform, but Cold Steel 2? Well, Cold Steel 2 was also initially released on PlayStation 3 and Vita, then eventually ported to PC and PS4 down the line. In line with the series tradition, it reused many of the same settings and assets from Cold Steel 1, and I wonder if that has something to do with people singing its praises a bit less than other entries. And that's too bad, because this is, I think, where the story of Cold Steel really starts to come into its own. The story picks up in the aftermath of the final events of Cold Steel 1, and if you want to avoid major spoilers, skip ahead to this timestamp. But honestly, there's no real way to talk about Cold Steel 2 without spoiling Cold Steel 1, so consider yourself spoiler warned. Reen Schwarzer and the members of Class 7 have just found out the truth about the identity of C, of the Imperial Liberation Front. Too late to prevent his assassination of Chancellor Osborne, and to everyone's shock and horror, it was Crow himself, a former member of Class 7. That alone would have been a hell of a note to end on, but further revelations continued. The ILF had been working in tandem with the noble faction of Erebonia, and in the wake of the death of Chancellor Osborne, this faction, now declaring themselves the Noble Alliance, made a power grab. They seized control over the capital city of Bereahard, the Imperial Palace, and fought off the Imperial Army with their newly unveiled Soldats, large piloted military bipedal Gundam. Their Gundam, what? Overwhelming the Imperial Army with superior military technology, the Noble Alliance effectively performed a coup d'etat. But even then, that's not all. The game leaves off with the Noble Alliance and their soldats coming knocking on the door of Thor's military academy. Reen and the rest of Class 7 are staging a resistance alongside the faculty of Thor's, and just when things start to go wildly off the rails, who would show up but Crow Armbrust himself in the flesh? No, wait, in his own special soldat. Except it's not just any ordinary soldat, no. It's the legendary Azure Knight Ordeen. It seems pretty off the rails at this point, but do you know what would make this situation even better? If Selene, a cat that you've been feeding milk to this entire game long, started talking because she can talk, and helps you summon your own knight because of all those old cool schoolhouse investigations you've been doing up to this point were actually a trial to determine whether Reen was worthy of being the Ashen Awakener this whole dang time. And he passed. And now it's go time. Reen versus Crow in the gun I mean, in the legendary knights. Crow and Ordeen versus Reen and freaking Valimar, the Ashen Knight. And in typical anime fashion, Reen Schwarzer easily defeats... Uh, wait. Gets his butt kicked. That's the one. Reen lost to Crow. Wait, is that in the script? Yep, that's what happens alright. But luckily, Class 7 is there to back Reen up. And using the power of friendship, Reen overcomes Crow... No, he, he runs away. Reen is literally forced to retreat from Thor's inside a damaged Valimar because Sassy Miss Kitty said so. With the members of Class 7 left in imminent peril, Thor's military academy in the throes of armed combat against bipedal tanks, and the entire nation under a military coup by the Noble Alliance. That's how we end Cold Steel 1. So all of that just sets the stage for Trails of Cold Steel 2, which opens up with Reen gradually coming to. 
Valimar is in dire need of some maintenance and energy following that unceremonious thrashing. Reen has no idea how his friends fared against the military invasion of Thor's military academy. Luckily, Reen isn't too far from his hometown, which soon becomes our hub of operations for a while, after having his bacon saved by Toval, a bracer who happened to be in the area at just the right time, because something has awakened some ancient magic knights, or otherwise autonomous mecha, that have been going out on a rampage all across Erebonia. The story of Trails of Cold Steel 2 follows Rain as he scours Erebonia to reunite his friends while navigating the nation now under military occupation by the country's established nobility. And I really can't stress this enough, that there is truly just so much going on in Erebonia, and all across Zumuria for that matter, as the events of Cold Steel 2 overlap with a good chunk of Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. The pacing of Cold Steel 2 is a completely different animal from Cold Steel 1, which has a slow start culminating in the crescendo of calamity that I described moments ago, but Cold Steel 2 continues the story at a mad pace that ups the ante every chance that it gets. Rather than a chill vibe punctuated with action, Cold Steel 2 has a near constant sense of urgency with moments of respite, the yang to Cold Steel 1's yin. And oh man, does this game ever leave a mark on its player. Aside from the overarching story, the individual characters' story arcs were another highlight of Cold Steel 2. Reen's initial objective of reuniting with his friends as he tracks them all down really does wonders to characterize the members of Class 7 in a huge way. By finding them spread across the land, Reen finds the various characters acting on their own or doing what they can to help the areas where they can be found. It's nice to see each of these characters having agency of their own instead of simply sitting around waiting for Reen to show up. And the same could be said of so many other students of Thor's military academy who you will find scattered across all of Erebonia. Aside from the continuation of the incredible story of Cold Steel 1, Trails of Cold Steel 2 is very similar to its predecessor in every way in which it is not outright identical. And to be clear, that's not a complaint. When you have a system that works, sometimes it's best to simply tinker around the edges, and with Cold Steel 2, the most noteworthy tinkering you'll notice is in the combat system. The core mechanics of combat are still vastly the same, but with some new additions. The S-Crafts that we've enjoyed in Cold Steel 1 are gradually replaced with higher power and more over-the-top upgraded versions. Deeper character links bestow even greater linked benefits, such as free healing, guarding each other against various attacks, MP restoration, and so on. And perhaps the greatest change of them all, the return of Overdrive. The Overdrive system makes a return from Trails to Azure, and essentially makes it so you and a linked companion can hoard the next several turns to yourselves. And while Overdrive starts off as being restricted to being between Reen and his companions, the game gradually opens this ability up to occur between other party members as well by overcoming challenging battles. And while I won't go over all of the new combat features at this time to avoid undue spoilers, rest assured that there are some extra bits of fun tucked under the hood just waiting to be unlocked. And just as with Cold Steel 1, Cold Steel 2 insists that you maximize your character loadouts to build out your dream team. The customization options feel restrictive at first in comparison to the end of Cold Steel 1, but by the end I can guarantee that the flexibility of endgame character building is even greater. But I suppose that now is the right time to address the giant mecha in the room. Reen now has access to Valimar the Ashen Knight, thanks to having overcome all of the trials found in the old schoolhouse in Trails of Cold Steel. So it should come as no surprise that with great mecha comes great mecha combat. The mecha combat system is completely different from the rest of the game. Initially, these start out as 1v1 battles between Valimar and a lone soldat during a climactic moment or two. But the battlefield grows over time, including larger groups of opponents. This combat system allows Reen to have Valimar target one of three spots on each opponent. Attacking the opponent's vital points will cause them to be unbalanced, which gives Valimar a follow-up attack. As you fight more soldats, some shift stances as they go on the defensive or power-up mega attacks. This shifts around those sold-out weak points, which adds to the complexity of combat. 
In addition, Reen's companions of Class 7 may also assist Reen in the fray by lending their own special abilities to cast offensive spells or various stat buffs. Additionally, Valimar can take defensive actions, restoring his hit points or gather energy. All of this doesn't make for a particularly deep or even challenging combat system, but one that is flashy and inoffensive that gives the player a new way to interact with the game during these climactic moments. And many of those climactic moments just wouldn't be what they are if not for the incredible cast of villains in Cold Steel 2. So many of the villains from the Imperial Liberation Front ended up being deeper and more endearing than I suspected by the end of Cold Steel 1, while other villains I only learned to hate even more as the story progressed. But the real show stealer here for me was Crow. He was already a favorite character of mine in Cold Steel 1, but naturally pitting him up against the rest of Class 7 after we fell in love with the character was a deliciously evil way of twisting the knife. The other standout villain who I won't go into too much here was McBurn. Keep your eyes peeled for him. There was a particular showdown with this guy that sent me back to my adolescence, like watching Goku's Super Saiyan transformation for the first time all over again. Dumb, giddy, over-caffeinated with hype kind of grin that just didn't leave my face for an instant. It was so good! Just look forward to it, you won't be disappointed. The world presented in Cold Steel 2 is mostly the same as before, however now the entire thing is actually, eventually, traversable entirely by foot. This is kind of to a benefit and detriment simultaneously, because rather than having large areas almost dungeon-like in their expanse between settlements, they're usually just a few short screens away. Many of those screens we've already traversed before, but we're kind of just stopped shy of being able to cross into the next area. Kind of a shame, but honestly I shouldn't complain because it's already over a hundred hours long game, and filling it with even more traversal probably wouldn't have improved the game. It just feels like there was something missing here, some sort of natural barrier or change in scenery that used to separate regions in the Sky series, for instance, that just didn't seem to be there this time around. But perhaps that's just the nature of the translation to a polygonal environment. Whether this is or isn't much of a problem in the grand scheme is diminished somewhat by the addition of fast travel which is a very welcome addition at this point. Train enthusiasts are still in shambles over this change of direction, but I think most everyone else will prefer the fast travel and other amenities this affords us. But I'll just leave it at that for now. Musically and graphically, Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 are identical, which is to say, musically incredible and visually functional. So, rather than belabor the point any further, let me talk about something important for a moment because I think it's really going to affect a lot of purchasing decisions. The PlayStation 4 version of this game is phenomenal, includes extra voice acting just like Cold Steel 1, and even has all of the DLC included on disc. However, it also comes with a game crashing crashing bug. bug, bug comes with a game crashing bug, if you play it on the PlayStation 5 that is. This bug occurs near the later portion of the game during a long dramatic cutscene, but there is a workaround, and that workaround is to disable controller vibration in the in-game menu. Next, fast forward through the bugged cutscene by holding the fast forward button. And that's it. Crisis averted. At least it worked for me, but it would be really nice if Xseed would patch this sometime, but all things considered, I wouldn't hold my breath. Trails of Cold Steel 2 is an incredible sequel that takes everything that made the first game great and builds upon it in meaningful ways. The story was engaging and full of memorable moments and a diverse cast of characters that continues to evolve and grow. The combat system has been improved with new features and the addition of mecha combat while the game's world has become even more expansive and interconnected, and while there are some minor drawbacks such as the lack of natural barriers between regions and the PS5 bug, these are far outweighed by the game's strengths. Overall, Trails of Cold Steel 2 is a must-play game for fans of the series. I was a little afraid that I wouldn't have that much to say about Cold Steel 2 considering the fact that it's essentially the second half of Cold Steel 1, a game that I've already talked at length about, and despite not that much having changed aside from the story, I still can't stop talking about it. And it's wild for me that I haven't heard many people extolling this game's virtues. People keep telling me to look forward to Cold Steel 3, and well, I guess you could say that I definitely am now, but Cold Steel 2 is special in its own right. 
Cold Steel 2 goes hard and somehow manages to make me feel like a kid again, and that's why Trails of Cold Steel 2 deserves a spot in the Game Collection. The Game Collection is a viewer-supported show. Please consider becoming a patron just like these awesome people.